In this session, we're going to talk about a manual yield calibration. First off, I want to start talking about the physical components of the yield system. We have our moisture sensor up here. We want to make sure that it's clean and free of debris. Um, to check that, we can take uh, these two bolts loose, pull that out, and we can clean that with a glass cleaner and a paper towel. The other thing on our auger, we want to make sure that that's free of debris as well. So we can take these two pins out, drop the auger out, clean all the gunk out of there, and put it back together. The next thing I want to hit on that does affect our yield accuracy is our clean grain elevator chain. First off, we want to make sure that it is tensioned properly, and that is done by uh, adjusting these bolts to make sure that chain is not loose from the sprocket, but can still kind of slide back and forth on that sprocket. We want to also make sure that these paddles are not rubbing the housing or bearings in any way and are not curved or broken away from the chain as well. Another physical component that affects the yield system is our clean grain elevator speed sensor. And that is found on the left side of the machine right down here. We want to make sure that is plugged in and free of debris from the sensor. Another physical component that can affect our yield accuracy is our mass flow sensor impact plate. That is located here in our fountain auger. We want to make sure that there's no debris stuck behind that, as well as stuck on the impact plate itself. We want to also make sure that this impact plate is not worn. One way to check to see if your clean grain elevator chain paddles are wore is to come in here with a tape measure and measure the distance between the paddle and the housing to proper spec. That spec is one half inch. There are several steps to a manual yield calibration for an S-series combine. The first being a temperature calibration which matches the moisture sensor temperature to the outside ambient air temperature. The second being a mass flow vibration calibration which is performed with the separator and header engaged at full throttle like you would be harvesting. The third is a moisture correction and then fourth is finally the weight and yield calibration. The S-Series uses a multi-point calibration for better accuracy. Since it does use this multi-point, uh, multiple loads have to be collected for one calibration. Four to seven loads for one calibration is recommended per each crop. And each load needs to be over 3,000 pounds and uniform in size. The loads also need to be performed at different flow rates and this can be done easiest by varying the speed of harvest. Here's an example of several different loads done and you can see that the harvest speed changes but the targeted harvested weight is fairly similar. So if you harvest half a bin full on one load, try to harvest half a bin full on the other loads as well. Some best practices for yield calibrations are to avoid flow interruptions when calibrating. So you want to start with an empty grain tank and find a long run. Try to avoid calibrating when opening the field. Uh, you want to reduce flow variation when calibrating as well. So, once again, target those constant flow rate areas. Also, it's good practice to recalibrate with dramatic changes in grain, such as a big change in test weight or moisture. Namely, over 6 pounds in test weight and 8 points in moisture. On the GS3 screen, whether you have the 7-inch command arm on the armrest or the 2630, you're going to follow the same steps to perform a yield calibration. We first want to 
do our temperature sensor calibration, then our mass flow, and then we want to do the moisture correction. And that is found in tab H. And then I'm going to hit tab D. So here's where my moisture correction is. Um, for instance, if the elevator said that we are reading 13% moisture and the combine said 12, we would want to come in here and put a 1.0 moisture correction in. Once we have that set, we can come back to button F. And to go find the calibrations, we want to go to the book and the wrench, tab B. From the drop down menu, this is where I can find my calibrations. Here's my moisture sensor temperature, my mass flow vibration calibration, and my yield calibration. So if I click on my yield calibration and then I hit button B, it's going to bring me to the first screen here. This middle button is my load management button. And this is where I can see all my loads that I've done for the yield calibration. If I hit this return arrow, it'll take me back to this main screen. I can hit the arrow to the right and then arrow to the right again to start a load collection. At this point it's going to give me a load ID as well as the estimated weight as I'm harvesting. So if I go ahead and harvest some crop, uh, once again I need to be above 3,000 pounds and I want that collection sample to be uniform with the others. All right, now that I have collected my load, I can hit button A, and it is going to store that load for me. At this point, I can come back here in the load management button and once I get a certified scale weight, whether that be from an elevator or a calibrated grain cart, I can come back in here and put my actual weight. At this point here, it gives me a percentage here that it was off. As you can see, there's been several loads done. The loads that I want to use for the calibration, I simply have to put a check mark by and then go ahead and hit this black triangle that faces downward to calibrate. I can hit my accept arrow and my calibration has been done.